Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you once again for our leaders' meeting tonight. Thank you for our workers to you. Thank you for the way you are touching our lives. Thank you because of the results we're seeing already from our leaders, from our workers, from our members. Lord, we pray that you continue until you perfect all that you need to perfect in us in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that this, your work, will prosper in our hands. There will be real growth in every district and in every section of the work and at the headquarters church and all over this country and even in the continent and beyond, this work will grow and prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Be with us tonight again and continue to teach us and help us with the grace to be able to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank the Lord for what we have learned already during the time of building the body and such the scriptures. We now come to the message before we round up today and before we pray. We are looking at the message, Ministering in Faith, Hope and Love. Ministering in Faith, Hope and Love. You see, when we minister... The attitude of the minister matters a lot. A minister may minister, and a minister seen unbelief. You know, with this attitude, I'll preach. I know they are not going to listen. I know they are not going to get anything. I know there's not going to be any improvement, but this is my duty. I'll preach anyhow. That won't work. A minister might come with a kind of a hopeless attitude. It's a hopeless condition, and he's not willing to be like, uh, like Abraham, who hoped against hope, believing that what the Lord had said, he will fulfill. And we just feel it's a hopeless situation. There's nothing we can do about it. But meetings must go on, preaching must go on, praying must go on, activities must go on. And of course, uh, since there is no faith and there is no hope, we may come and we may minister without love we minister and it's out of duty you can tell in the way everything is going on but the lord wants us to know that if we're going to get results the results he wants and if our ministry is going to bear fruit we must do it in faith in hope and in love in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 and now abided faith hope charity that's love these three but the greatest of these is charity, is love. When it says the greatest, that makes the others to be great. You see, there are people that will think that love is just the only thing. But it says the greatest of these is love. Faith is great, hope is great, love is great, but the greatest of them all is love. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Here it says the Thessalonians, they had three things going for them. It talks of their faith and is a work of faith. It talks of their love, is a labor of love, and it talks of their hope and is a patience of hope. The patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the sight of God and our Father. You see very clearly then that as we minister, as we preach or we do other things that complement the preaching, that supports the preaching of the word, we do everything with faith, with hope and with love. These three are necessary. But they are indispensable in our lives each day. And until we see the Lord face to face, they will still be very, very significant. It implies that all that we do, if we are going to turn miserable situations or mystery into miracles, we are going to manifest all these three. Of course, as you look at the message, it divides naturally into the usual three parts. The first part on faith. The second part on hope and the third part on love. Three points then 
that we're going to consider in the message tonight. Number one, the possibilities of faith. The possibilities of faith. Number two, the patience of hope. The patience of hope. Number three, the power of love. The power of love. Number one, the possibilities of faith. Of course, many things, uh, many of the passages, maybe even all that we are referring to, you may know them already. But as we trust the Spirit of the Lord, that the Spirit of God is able to throw light on familiar passages, that He may even teach us the things we never knew about those verses. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We see here the possibilities of faith and it's very clear salvation comes by faith. In the doctrines it's called justification by faith. It means then that as we preach, one, we have faith that God will not allow the word to return to him void, but that we minister in faith knowing we're ministering salvation to sinners. There are different kinds of sinners. Some of them are hardened. Some of them are insincere. Some of them are dishonest. Uh, many of them, they've heard it before, but they never listen. But you come with faith. You know that as you are preaching. The word of God can still have impact, will still have impact. Like hammer, like sword, like light, to shine into the darkness of their hearts. So, you preach that word in faith and you preach it faithfully. But then, as you present the salvation message to the sinners, you know that the message will not save them if they do not have faith. So you know that faith must be the anchor of that message you are preaching. How many times we preach to sinners, we talk about their sin and we ought to. We talk about the evil things they have done and we ought to. We talk about Jesus Christ who came to save and we must. But you must make them to have faith in the Lord. Make sure that as you are preaching salvation, as a soul winner, as a Christian worker, as an evangelist, as missionary, whatever, that you emphasize that faith by which they are saved. Because they may repent as deeply as they ought to repent. And they may cry to the Lord, they may pray, they may do whatever. If they do not have their faith developed to be able to hold on to the Lord, that salvation will not be theirs. But salvation comes through faith. That's one of the possibilities of faith. In Acts chapter 15 verse 9, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Again, as we preach purity of heart, as we preach sanctification, and we preach holiness. Many times, uh, some of our members, even workers, may come to us and say, uh, they believe this doctrine doctrinally, in the mind, in the head. They know the verses, but uh, the problem is, they don't have this holiness. They don't have this uh, sanctification. What's your attitude? What are you going to tell them? Go and pray more. Go and consecrate more. Realize that you are not serious. You say you believe it. You don't really believe it. Will that help them to have that sanctification? What we are to do is to develop their faith. Make it simple for them. Show them how we can trust the Lord for this sanctification, for this purity of heart, because it says purifying their hearts by faith. It comes as they really have faith in the Lord. Have you met, have you seen some of our people that are saved and sanctified? They are sure about that. But they are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. What do, what do we tell them? How do we have this Holy Ghost baptism? And maybe there are some of us here tonight, leaders, preachers, workers, that are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. How are you endeavoring to have the Holy Ghost? You want to go to a night vigil. That's wonderful. That shows your seriousness, your eagerness. You want the Holy Ghost by all means. But do you know, we have the baptism in the Holy Spirit by faith as well. These are the possibilities of faith. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so let's 
encourage the faith of the people. Uh, sometimes, you know, it surprises you that as we preach on the Holy Ghost, our preachers may shout and sweat and uh, do a lot of things, thinking that uh, the more we shout, the more we'll be able to help the people to be zealous, to pray fervently, to have the Holy Ghost, to have the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Not always so. And even when uh, people pray and they want the Holy Ghost, they, they forget the area of the faith. That it is as we have faith and manifest that faith that we have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, they forget that and all we see is just the shouting and the crying. It doesn't come that way. So let's uh, preach in faith, believing that the Lord will make use of the words we speak and the things we say and generate faith in the people after all faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god and that, that faith will make them to hold on to the hands of the lord so that they will be able to be to have the baptism in the holy ghost uh, apart from salvation apart from sanctification apart from the baptism in the holy spirit what else do we have by faith we're looking at the possibilities of faith acts chapter 3 verse 16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all possibilities of faith uh, that, that's what faith does and brothers and sisters here tonight uh, let's re-emphasize it's not just that god can heal us he will heal us he promises to heal us when does healing come if you know the minds of many people in our church when there's revival night well that's good that's great but every time we manifest faith whether there's revival hour or not whether it is thursday or wednesday whether it is crusade or retreat whether it is saturday workers meeting or tuesday leaders meeting the moment we manifest faith we have the healing whether it's a pastor preaching or our coordinator preaching, whether it is power night or normal Thursday revival hour, whenever we manifest faith for the promises of God to take effect, they do take effect. Let's emphasize that. And it also helps us to understand that for us to keep healthy is by faith. We get healed by faith and we also remain healed by faith. And also let me lift up your uh, understanding in this area. Uh, if you manifest faith in the Lord, uh, the Lord will keep your life. And you know, sometimes we can even damage ourselves, destroy ourselves by the things we say, by the things we, we repeat. You see in the papers, and those media people, they are doing their work. They need to inform the society that these are the things that are going on in our society. And many times, those things are the things that we believers will carry, or, you know, will carry among ourselves and will just destroy our faith. And we'll say, you know the crime? And you know how people, you know, lives are just being lost nowadays. This is happening, this is happening. Don't misunderstand me. We need to be informed that this is what is going on in our cities. This is what is going on. It will, that will help us to intercede and to pray for our city and for our country. But there are times we share that information to the point that we lose our faith. And it appears that because the way, you know, things are, some of us cannot even attend the Tuesday meeting or the, the Monday Bible study. And we cannot attend the evening meetings because we concentrate on the things that are happening around us and we lose our faith. But brothers and sisters, the way to get healed, the way to remain healed, the way to be protected, it is by faith. If we keep on reading the promises of God, looking unto God, looking unto Jesus, standing on the promises of God, developing our faith, the protection around us will keep us secured. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, Ephesians 6, 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked of the wicked well the wicked what it means there is the devil satan lucifer that old serpent himself but it also includes his agents the fallen angels the demons the evil spirits so it is by this faith we are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and it also includes uh, wicked 
human powers, uh, witches, wizards, and all these people that are able to operate in the occult. It says it's by faith. We're able to quench all their fiery darts. And so, for yourself to start with, God has given you a ministry. Why are you always afraid that the witches and the wizards and the familiar spirit people will, let me use a common language, quench your light? Will, will, will put off your light. You will not be able to move forward. They will destroy your family. Don't you know you are a child of God? Don't you know that you are a minister of the gospel? Don't you know you are a man of God? You are a woman of God? Develop your faith. That shield of faith will shield you and protect you. That nothing evil will be able to touch you. And they may throw the darts, but all the furry darts of the wicked will be quenched, will be broken in pieces, and they will not touch you in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 18 through to verse 21, who against hope believed in hope. Against hope, even when situations are hopeless, you don't run away from that situation. Uh, there are some people that, you know, they run away from where they are because they feel uh, there's nothing I can do here. My ministry is finished here. This district, nothing good can happen again. Uh, if they want to send another coordinator, let them send another coordinator because nothing good can happen in this place again. Against hope, believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. It shows you that actually there's no limit to what faith can do. If we can only believe the Lord, you can keep on ministering in that place where you are ministering and believe God, that God will give you the anointing and the unction and the power and the gifts of the Spirit of God to be able to minister successfully so that you will have a fruitful ministry. It's the same with our house fellowship leaders. It's the same with all our sectional leaders. It's the same in every place where we're ministering. God can make us to succeed and be fruitful just as we believe. Although I've not covered all the possibilities of faith, I'm going to move on to the next one. But before I move on, just look at this verse, Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. As a minister, hold that. If you believe that sinners are going to be saved, they will be saved. If you believe that the weak will be strengthened, they will be strengthened. If you believe that God will use those little things you are able to say to make a change, a transformation in the lives of the people you are speaking to, it will be unto you according to your faith. If you believe that uh, you know, revival is going to come and this growth that has started already, that it will continue in the district where you are now, in the group where you are now, in the central church, in the headquarters church, in the whole of the country, it will be unto us according to our faith. All things are possible to him that believeth. Now, point number two is the patience of hope. The patience of hope. When we talk about hope, it means that we want to be patient. Actually, patience and hope are linked together. And when we talk about hope, it means we are waiting. You have a picture. You have a dream. And you have something you are expecting. You are hoping for it. But you have the ability to wait patiently for that thing until the thing is accomplished. Uh, this is uh, one of the problems with many people that uh, preach faith. And don't misunderstand me. We need to preach faith. We must preach faith. We must even preach more faith. But many of them, they depreciate uh, hope in preference to faith. Preachers do that. Some church members too, they do that. They do not think that faith and hope can go together. That if you have faith, for them, it means that hope has no place. They exalt faith to the point that all they want in is instantaneous result. They do not know the value of waiting patiently in hope. But actually, hope makes us to wait patiently while standing 
by faith on God's unfailing promises. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and verse 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For that which a man sees, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we with patience wait for it. This is the thing that uh, we actually need as uh, leaders, as workers. We need to have real hope, strong hope in the Lord. Uh, the Lord has sent you to minister in that place where you are. And then you believe that uh, maybe your ministry maybe is over there, you, that this is over in that area. You believe that God wants to move you higher to a new section. Why don't you wait in hope? Why don't you do the best you can do in that place where you are now? Don't demonstrate frustration. Don't demonstrate impatience. Don't demonstrate that, you know, nobody is thinking about you anymore. Uh, don't demonstrate, you know, the attitude of, well, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just stay there. I'll just stand in there. No. Be excited about the opportunities of today. While you are waiting patiently for what will still come, you've been following up on a particular brother upon a particular sister and they are not yielding don't give up that's the place of hope you are waiting patiently and you've tried to resolve a particular problem you believe that in our district here in our church here if we can resolve this particular problem that's it that's it everything will fall in line don't give up keep on waiting in patience in hope because although you don't see that result now you can see with the eyes of faith and then patiently you can wait believing the lord that's the place of hope and we need that don't you see when god gave promise to abraham he believed the lord and the bible says his faith was counted unto him for righteousness but he waited and waited and waited and i need to encourage uh, some of my brothers and sisters uh, sometimes uh, you think uh, we are forgotten well we have not forgotten but even if we forget god will not forget you uh, there are times a coordinator will be concerned a group coordinator will be concerned and he'll come to me and say um, do you remember brother so and so sister so and so is being under discipline and um, we will be looking at his life everything is okay when is he going to be called back oh by the grace of god it may not be long but while he's still waiting like that until things are put in place let him still have hope in the lord and wait patiently in hope or sometimes um, you feel that the area you are working now uh, that's not the best area for you you believe that your talent your ability your skill and the dealings of the lord with you this the other area the lord will want you to work maybe you are right my brother and in all probability, my sister, you are right. But while you are still in this other area, do your best. And believe that the, the seed you are sowing, in this place where you are now, that seed will grow and bring forth. And then in God's own time, that's how he did it for Joseph, he will bring you to the place you ought to be. And so you will not scatter things and destroy things and speak just anyhow when you have hope in the Lord look at that verse 25 again but if we hope for that we see not then we with patience wait for it and sometimes uh, you know uh, sometimes you are frustrated because uh, some people that are working in this other area they should have been in your area um i don't want to be very specific uh, because i want you to just take it and apply it to yourself you are working in a section and you're looking at some good good people good good workers they are in another section you believe actually those people and maybe you are right they should actually be in this your own section and for this reason for this reason for this reason they should be in this your own section but we are tying them down in that other section uh, something assignment we have given them is tying them down in that other section you can become so frustrated and you come to talk to them when you have chance and you know you clamp down on them you shout on them you terrify them you intimidate them come over to this side don't you know you belong to this other side 
my brother, when you manifest in patience, it means you don't have hope. Just wait. Wait patiently. Pray about it. Manifest faith. And then at the right time, if God wants those people to come over to this section, they'll come over to that section. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, our sisters who are uh, nursing mothers or they are pregnant or, or maybe you don't know they are pregnant, but they are. It doesn't show yet. And they're a little bit slow. And they are not coming forth the way you want them to come forth. Because they need to take their time. So they don't have miscarriage. Sometimes we leaders, we can show impatience. And you don't just hope. You just, just leave them the way they are. Preach the word. Don't forget. Preach it in love. Say everything you need to say in love. And if they are slow, they are not as fast as you want them to be. Hope and uh, be patient and wait. And eventually things will come through like they ought to come through. In Job chapter 14 verse 7. Job 14 verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down. That it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. I know that many of us know this passage. But to know it in another context. The context we are looking at today. Is the labor that we have. The patience of hope. That is connected with our service to the Lord. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, Christian leaders are likened sometimes to a fruit bearing tree. Jesus did that when he talked about the prophets. He said about the first prophets, you know them by their fruits. Then he talked about a good tree bearing good fruit. And talked about the corrupt tree that cannot bear good fruit. That means we as leaders, we as Christian workers, there are times we are likened to trees. And it says that the righteous will bear fruit even in old age. There are times the tree is cut down. There are times the tree is uh, disciplined. There, there are times the tree, it looks like the branches are off, the fruits are off, and it's like, what else will happen? There is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again. But how does that tree sprout again, bud again, bring branches again, bring fruits again? By remaining in that place where the tree is found there are times our leaders our workers who are under discipline the branches are off the fruits are off they're too much in a hurry and because they have not been called back just by the time the lord is thinking about them don't you know the lord counts every leader every worker very precious in his sight at the time they are to be called to the place they ought to be they get discouraged no hope anymore impatience will set in and then they will they might go to another church or they might somebody is calling them and they said well i'm wasting my time here i'm wasting my life here my ministry is not regarded not needed here and then they will go to another place and then when we hear we say why has he done that it was just at the time we we're thinking to review the whole thing and to see what to do and everything now is lost let us have hope and as we have hope we know that the tree will sprout again it may be you are a wife and you are here tonight and your husband you know maybe has been under discipline and something happened or maybe not under discipline but you know something happened discouragement setting why don't we manifest patience and hope so that by the grace of god uh, things will come through and uh, what ought to come to you will come to you because the plan of the Lord for your life will be fulfilled. No matter what happens, the will of God will still be done. There's nobody that can walk against God. A perfect, absolute, ultimate will. In Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah chapter 31, we're looking at verse 16. It says, Thus says the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, says the Lord. And they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Verse 17. And there is hope in thine end, says the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. You see here there are times that instead of just doing the work cheerfully and going on with the work and whatever problems are there, whatever losses are there, just put that aside and just hope in the Lord. It says here there is hope. In thine end, says the Lord, that thy children shall come again to thine own borders. He was talking to the children of Israel. Uh, they had lost uh, those children and it's like hope was lost. 
There was nothing they could do anymore. But the Lord says, Refrain thine voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears. Your work will be rewarded, says the Lord. If you have uh, thought that, uh, you know, all that you have done, things are lost, nothing is taking place anymore, uh, the Lord is assuring you that uh, that work of your hand, uh, the work you are doing for the Lord in the church, in the kingdom, the work will be rewarded. In uh, Psalm 130, 130, Psalm 130, I'm looking at verse 5 through to verse 8. I will wait for the Lord. That's the language of somebody that has hope. I won't take loss into my hand. I will not uh, do anything that will show that I've lost hope. I'm going to wait. I will wait. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. Do you see that? Waiting is connected with hoping. When you hope, you can wait. When you are waiting, it's a proof. It's an index of your hope. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Let the whole nation hope in the Lord. Let the whole church hope in the Lord. Let the whole district, the whole group, and let your whole family hope in the Lord. And let every individual hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Let's hope in the Lord. Sometimes you think that a particular backslider is gone, is gone too far. Hope in the Lord. Because the Lord will redeem all his Israel from all his iniquities. Sometimes you think a sinner, a relative. You've spoken, you've done everything. You've given cassettes, you've given literature. And it's like your relative is not yielding. Just hope in the Lord. The Lord will redeem from all iniquity. It may be even yourself as you are here. Uh, because as you are there, you may find that there is a particular sin that is just bogging you down. Besetting sin in your own life. It's getting you down and you are, you are just there. And you are saying, these people don't know that there is sin in my life. And I'm, I'm afraid to tell anybody. And I'm afraid to confess and open up. They don't know the things that I'm battling with. Maybe I'll just, I, one day I'll just get rid of myself. Because I don't know how I can stand this. Why don't you hope in the Lord? Just keep on waiting on the Lord. And the Lord will solve the problem. The blood of Jesus is still powerful and mighty. He'll wash you whiter than snow. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord can, can settle the problem. And uh, throw away your fears and throw away your hopelessness and, and come, come to the Lord. Of course, you know that if somebody is living in sin, he should not be on the work. Uh, that, uh, that, that's settled. And you can see how to uh, honestly talk to the leader so that we excuse you for some time. But the point I'm making is don't give up as if God will not forgive you. Don't give up as if you will not overcome that sin. Don't give up as if there is no hope and there is no remedy. There is remedy in the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, of course, as we are preparing for the coming of the Lord, as we are looking up to the coming of the Lord, the, the way we do that is looking up in hope. In Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, looking for that blessed hope. And that's the ultimate hope, the, the glorious hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. As we are uh, standing and remaining and waiting in hope for the coming of the Lord, uh, we'll make sure that we keep ourselves in the righteousness of the Lord. First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3 from verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Listen to this. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Everyone that has this hope of being rapturable, going with the Lord when he shall appear, when he comes, will purify himself, will wash himself in the blood of the Lamb to remain pure, even as he is pure. Then the power of love. 
number one possibilities of faith number two the patience of hope number three now the power of love uh, love does a lot in our own lives and in the lives of uh, children love matters a lot in the lives of adults that we are ministering to that we are working with love matters a lot if you look at our relationship between us and the lord it's it's based on love in ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 4 but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we are dead in sins has quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved ye are saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus you see here what the love of god has done it starts by saying if you go back to verse one we're dead in sins and trespasses by the time you get to verse six we're already in the heavenly places in christ jesus allow me to use this language dead in sins and trespasses were in the grave but the love of god met us in the grave raised us up until he lifts us up to glory I deliberately used that kind of language from the grave to the glory for you to understand that the level the valley the low level at which our workers are the low level at which your members in the district may be the thing that will lift them up from the grave to the glory that will lift them up from the level low level where they are now to heavenly places in christ jesus is love we thought well you know raise up those workers make them to be where they ought to be grow and develop if we can you know shout on them criticize them knock them and beat them down and do everything apart from love but the greatest weapon we have and the greatest tool we have to be able to bring people from the grave to the glory is the love of God. And the thing that is uh, uh, going to do that in our churches, in our districts, as we minister to the people, help the people, is the love of God flowing from us onto the people. And then it's love that cancelled, crushed, removed the enmity we add towards God. And then we now become not just friends of God, but sons and daughters of God. I'm telling you that if we can act as God acts, acted towards us, and we can manifest the love of God, some of the people in the church now, uh, that sometimes you coordinators, uh, preachers, leaders, you are afraid of them. Although they are members of the church, although they might be workers in the church, you are just afraid. I'm afraid of brother so and so. I'm afraid of sister so and so. In fact, if they can transfer so and so from my district and take him to another place, take her to another place, I'll just be all right. Do you know the thing that will do the work? It's love. If you will love those people you fear, if you will love those enemies, you'll find that your love can convert them and make them sons, dependable sons, daughters in the ministry, daughters, profitable daughters in the kingdom of God. It is love that will do that in 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24, meaning there to you from verse 2. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats and he came to the sheep goats by the way where was a cave and Saul went in to cover his feet he went to rest and uh, David and his men remained in the sides of the cave and the men of David said unto him behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee behold I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand and that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good to thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David sat smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing is the Lord's is the anointed of the Lord. They wanted David to kill his enemy. 
they wanted him to just get rid of the man and then you'll be on the throne isn't that what we like to do in our impatience isn't like what we like to do. isn't that what we like to do just get rid of all the tires and then the witch will grow get rid of all the workers that are you know uh, pain in our neck and thorn in our feet and then i'll be able to do the workers out to do it so david stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against saul and saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way and david also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after saul saying my lord the king and when Saul looked behind him, David stopped, stooped, that's bowed down, his face to the earth, and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy heart. Behold this day thine eyes have seen, how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in, in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. That's love. See what that love did in verse 16. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. You know, anything, any action that could make Saul to weep, that that's an action that's a real real action that broke him down let me ask you if david had come into logic argument and had proved to saul how he was wrong he was a great sinner he was persecuting him this is not right will complain will criticize that will not have any effect on saul don't you know that jonathan had used that logic on saul and I said, this young man put his life in his hand. He defended you and defended the nation. Why do you want to kill him? All that logic did not have a permanent effect on Saul. But this act of love had an effect on Saul that he wept. And it says in verse 17, he said to David, thou art more righteous than I. He didn't make this confession when, when Jonathan put down all that logic. It is love that will win the day. It is love that will win our enemies over. It is love that will convert them, that will change them. You know these uh, people that run after their enemies and fast and pray to destroy them, that's not going to do any, any good thing in the kingdom. It, it's it's uh, easier to, you know, to fast than to love. It is easier uh, to pray that God will destroy your enemies than to love. The key is love. Let us love. All those people, whether they are enemies in the private circle or in the pub public uh, arena, whatever it is, it is love that will win the battle. And in the work we are doing for the Lord, it is love that will actually solve the problems and remove the conflicts and turn the, uh, the opposers and uh, the, the, inco the people that are not cooperating, that will turn them around and then the work will be done. And then the work will prosper in your hand. In that verse 17, he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good whereas i've rewarded the evil uh, this man came to the realization that he couldn't have come to apart from the showing apart from the appearance and the action of love coming from david and thou hast showed this day how thou hast dealt well with me for as much as when the lord had delivered thee into mine hand into thine hand i delivered me into thine hand thou kills me not for if a man find his enemy he accepted he was enemy he accepted he has been acting to david as enemy he said if a man find his enemy will he let him go well away wherefore the lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day he began to even pray for david listen to this and now behold i know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. That's it. If we can show this love, the power of love is to bend uh, the will of our enemies. 
the will of her opposers and these enemies will turn to the friends and even they even begin to pray for us and uh, when your friends are praying for you and your enemies are praying for you and the pastor is praying for you and your husband is praying for you everybody is praying for you and christ is interceding for you obviously the work of god will prosper in your hand in proverbs chapter 25 proverbs 25 verse 21 if thine enemy be hungry give him bread to eat and if he be thirsty give him water to drink for thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head that will melt his heart and then the lord shall reward thee uh, that's uh, what the Lord is uh, calling us to. He's saying that we should just love our enemies. And uh, don't count anybody as especially members of the church, workers who are working along with you. Just forget what happened in the past and just love. It is love that will win the day. Before we pray, let's look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Proverbs 17, verse 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. As we are doing the work of the Lord, be a friend, be a friend. Be a friend to the workers who are working under your leadership. Be a friend to your colleagues who are working along with you in the same district. Be a friend to a fellow house fellowship leaders, fellow zona leaders, fellow women representatives. Be a friend, and a friend loveth at all times. Understand that if we're going to minister and we're going to succeed in ministry, we need to minister in faith, minister in hope, and minister in love. And it is that love that will bear the fruit that we desire in the ministry. Be a friend at all times and love at all times. And be like a brother. Be like a real sister. And make sure that in the time of adversity, in the time of difficulties, of, for other people, for people in the district, you are, st you are very close to them praying with them and helping them in the best way you can. Remember once again, the possibilities of faith, the patience of hope, the power of love. Let's rise up.